Swap Edition started in about 2016. I've always been quite interested in multiples and editing individual, like lot sequences of artworks. Um, and that's kind of how it started. And I sort of bumbled around for ages trying to work out what it was and where, whether it should be a thing or just a few exhibitions. Um, I can run it on my studio. I can always carry them on the train. They're, they're like a little group set where actually I can send them on a the post somewhere and there could be a show halfway across the world. Ideally, that's the plan in the future. So they're very easy to, to operate. They don't take up a big storage problem. And I also get to meet lots of artists during it. So it's interesting for me as part of my practice. I'm not interested in the art market, the art world in general in that sense. There is no funding for this project. I'm going to give you no money. But what you will get back is a whole set of everyone's works. So um, the actual value in it is you, you get an addition of... Uh, the, this one's 10, the previous ones have been 12, sometimes they're more. So actually, if you're, in, if you're an artist who's interested in collecting artworks or owning artworks or having artworks around you, um, and you can see a value in you making a set of your works, you swapping them for a whole set of other people's works. Um, I think it's quite hard to put a value on it. Mm. I'm doing something that I want to be, I want other people to be able to, to see, mm. and I want people to be able to find it, and I want, I think, um, the same way that I, uh, there's a lot of things that come back in time that are culturally valuable that maybe are not quite mentioned at the time. I think there's, a, there's an importance in recognising the breadth of what happens in the art world. I started with ad hoc because the whole project was quite ad hoc and I just liked that as an approach and I read an essay that really inspired me and I wanted to do the second one about trade which is sort of anti-market and then the third one was sort of about the artist as a machine mass producing and then Brexit happened I kind of tackled that a bit with a survival kit. Um, this one's more of like in a post-Brexit bizarrely isolationist world that seems very ironic talking about it today with coronavirus. Um, but in the future, there's, there's, I kind of choose topics that I think that are interested. I'm interested in generally in my practice, and I see this as something that I'm an artist, I'm not trying to be a gallery or curator. This is an extension of what I do with my work. So I kind of throw out things that I'm interested in to, to quite shamelessly make projects about.